Hi, my name is Maria Doyle, and I'm the Application and Training Specialist for the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. Today, I'm going to take you through the hands-on tutorial for CRISPR screen analysis. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through the steps for processing CRISPR screen data. And we're going to identify essential genes across experimental conditions. There are some introductory slides that you can find in the link in the material here, and also a bit of background um, in the tutorial website. Okay, so today what we're going to cover is we'll upload some data, some FASTQ files uh, of raw reads, and we'll check these raw reads for quality. We'll trim adapter sequences, and then we will count the guide, uh, the guides we have, and then we will test for differential abundance of guides across two conditions. So in this case, a treatment and a control. Okay, so the data we're going to use in this tutorial is from um, a CRISPR screen from this paper here. We've got three samples we're going to use. We've got a baseline sample taken at time zero, time zero control. We've also got a sample that's been treated with drug for eight days, the APR drug. And we've got a control sample that's been treated with vehicle for eight days. That's our vehicle sample. And the aim here is to identify genes whose knockout increases the cancer cells sensitivity to the drug. So we will use FASTQ files containing 1% of reads from the original data to demonstrate, demonstrate the read processing steps. Okay. So what I am going to do is to go to Galaxy. So I'm gonna set up one window that has Galaxy and you can use, here I'm going to use Galaxy Australia. You could also use Galaxy Europe to do this tutorial. And so I have one window with the, with the material and one with Galaxy. Okay. So go ahead and log into Galaxy. If you're not already logged in, I am. And then in a new history, I can give it a name. I'm going to call it CRISPR screen. And then we will load in our data. So here are our three FASTQ files. So I'm going to copy this, the links for these files. Go to upload data in Galaxy. And I'm going to click on rule based and upload these data, these files as a collection. So what I'm pasting in here is actually two columns, one with the names of the samples and ones with the files names. And I'm going to create a collection to make it easier to keep the data organized in the history and to save on some file renaming. OK, so I'm going to click build. OK, and then a window should pop up. And here I need to, under the rules, click add modify column definitions. I need to specify a name for each of the files. So that's the list identifier. And I'm gonna say that is in column A. So these are the names for my samples. And then I need to specify the URL. So where the files are located. So that's in column B. So apply that. Okay, and the final thing I need to do is give this collection a name. So I'm gonna call it FASTQs. And I'm going to upload that. Okay, and you should see it appearing here in your history. So at the moment it's grey, this means it's a job waiting to run, waiting to upload. And when it starts uploading, it'll turn yellow. And then when it's finished uploading, it'll be green. So now it's turned yellow. I can close this off so you can see. So it's uploading there and it's a list. So this is what a collection is. It's like a folder. So a list and containing multiple uh, files. Okay, and then in the tutorial website, you can see the steps we have gone through here. That should upload shortly.
Okay, great. It's green. And see, we've got a list. It's our collection with three items. If I click on the name, there's our three samples there. You can click on the name of each of the files and see it's FASTQ format and get a little peek so, into it. So these are our FASTQ reads. So if I click on the eyeball, I can have a look at the file in the main pane. And I can close off this panel on the left. Oops. Okay, just to get a bit more space. So these are our reads. So each of these four lines is one read. So we've got the first line is the read name. Then we've got the sequence for the read. So in this case, there's 75 bases, a space surplus, and then we've got the quality score for each of the bases. Okay. So I'll go back. Because what we'll do now is we'll use a program called FastQC to have a look at the quality of these reads. So I'm typing FastQC in the tool search bar here and then clicking on FastQC to open up that tool. Okay, so because we are using this coll a collection this list, I need to, we need to click on the data set collection icon and then select our collection here, fast queues. Uh, we also need, well, we don't need it, but we're gonna upload a file containing the, some adapter sequences, including our CRISPR adapter sequences. So we can have a look at these in the raw data. Okay, so we're going to upload this file here. So I'm going to copy that, go to the upload data. So this time I'm not making a collection out of that. This file is just a single file. So I'm going to use paste fetch and paste in the link to this adapters file here and click start, close, and that should appear here in green when it's uploaded. So to explain here, with CRISPR screen data, we're interested in the uh, single guides. So these are these sequences in blue. Oh, zoom in a bit. Oh. So sequences in blue and this the, re the spaces surrounding them in red are the adapter sequences that we don't care about and want to remove, but we're going to upload this adapter list file so we can have a look at these adapter sequences in our data. Okay. Let's make that a bit smaller. Okay, so we've selected our fast queues. Now we are going to select our adapters file. So the, as it says here, fast QC will explicitly look for these adapters. And if we want to peek in this file, we can see what it is. So the first four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, the first four are sequences FASTQC will look for by default. So we'll just include those. And then the, we've added in two more that are our CRISPR sequences. So these regions in red around the guide. Okay, so I'm going to run that. And what we'll do is, so FASTQC will output a, um, a report for each of our three samples. So we can use a tool called MultiQC, which I'll search for in the toolbar, to aggregate these multiple reports into a single one to make it easier to view the results. And you've got many samples. So we tell MultiQC what type of what tool we've used to generate the reports we want to summarize. So in that case, it's FASTQC, it's raw data, it's in a, it's in a collection. So it's this raw data here, and we click execute. Okay, and that's waiting to run there, and it's running now. And this will give us one, uh, in this case, a web page that will summarize the past QC results for our three samples. 
and it's just finishing now. And I'm actually, I'm gonna add a tag to make it easier to see what this is in the history. So there's a button here for creating tags. So if I type a hash and then I'm gonna say, call it fastqc untrimmed. And that just makes it easier to, for me to know in the history what multi-QC is summarizing there. If we click on the eyeball, we can have a look at our fast QC report. We can see how many sequences we have for each of our samples. Just got a small amount here for this uh, data set uh, for the tutorial. Um, there is a Galaxy tutorial on quality control that goes through these fast QC plot um, in detail. But here we just are going to have a look at the base quality. So we can see that along our read length, so we can see our reads are 75 bases. We've got good quality for our bases along the reads. So the sequencing has been, has been good. And the other thing we also really want to have a look at is the adapter content. So if we go down to our adapter content section, so what we can see is the adapters present, and this is using that file of the adapter list file that we um, supplied for to FastQC. So we can see that at the beginning, so again, this is the length of our reads. And at the beginning of the reads, we can see some of the five prime CRISPR adapter has been detected um, at different positions in the reads. Um, that's because of the staggered, um, this stagger sequence that's present in, uh, um, that's used in this protocol, it's explained in the tutorial. And we can see at the ends of our reads from about 40 onwards, we're starting to see the CRISPR three prime adapter, uh, slightly in less amount than the five prime, because the three prime uh, base quality tends to be a bit lower uh, towards the ends of reads in general. Okay, but that's picking up the adapters that we expect um, in our samples, our CRISPR adapters, and we can also see a small little bit of Illumina adapter present there, which means we've got some short sequences or a small amount of primer dimer there. Okay. Okay, so now we'll trim the adapters from our reads and we'll use cut adapt tool for that. So I'll type that in the toolbar. Okay, and I will off. Okay, so our data is single end. Again, we need to say it's a collection. I'm gonna input our fast cues. And then we're going to say, tell cut adapt, we want to trim adapters from the front. So we are going to trim. This is the adapter sequence here. So I'll enter that sequence. And I will select to output the report and start that running and explain. Okay, so, so here, so as, as I said, our guides are these regions in blue. We are telling Cut Adapt we want to trim this front bar to the bit in front of the blue by putting in the five prime adapter sequence. We could then, we could also trim off the, the uh, three prime adapters or shorten the reads to just have the guides. But magic, the tool we're going to use for the analysis, will take just the guide sequence from the front of the adapters, from the front of the reads. So we really only need to trim these um, five prime adapters. Okay, so cut adapters finished running. As before, we can summarize the cut adapt report using multi QC. So we'll do that. Okay. 
need to say the input is cut adapt. And it is cut adapt report we're going to summarize. This is just so we can have a look at the trimming that's been done. And that one's waiting to run. And while it's waiting to run, I can add a tag. So I'm going to add a tag, could add that report. Okay, and that's there. And that's like just to make it easier to see which, again, what the multi QC is summarizing. Okay, and that's run. So we can have a look at the multi QC report. So the trimming report from Cut Adapt. So here we can see for each of our samples, we've had a similar amount trimmed, about 34%. That's been trimmed from the, the front, from the fire prime end of each read. We can see that we've got, no, none of our reads have been dropped. We've still got 100% because we just told cut it out to trim reads from the front. And then in this trim sequence lens, we can see how many reads with the different lengths of drafters have been trimmed. Okay, so if I click, I click on these buttons, I can get the plots to show up, whoops. Okay, so we can have a look at say the counts, the numbers of reads that have been trimmed for at each of these lengths. So we can see we've got mainly 20, 21, et cetera, basis trimmed from the front of the reads up to 31 basis. And that's actually what we expect for this um, uh, sequencing protocol because of the use of these stagger sequences. And that's explained uh, more in the link here. You can see what those stagger sequences are. And um, so this is what we expect to see for the trimming for this data set. And we can also see that the samples are fairly similar. It's maybe a bit more trimming uh, performed for the control, the T0 control sample. Okay, but that looks um, pretty good. And if you want, then you can go on and run fast QC and multi QC again on the trimmed data set. So on the output of could adapt the fast cues that could adapt has produced just to see how the trimming affects the adapters. And you should see that there's now no adapter, no CRISPR adapter present in the first 20 bases of the reads. It's been removed. Okay. So now we can um, go and use magic. So that's a toolkit for CRISPR screen analysis. And we will use magic count first. So that will count how many reads we have um, for each guide. And we will do that. So first we need to import our, our library file. So magic count will count how many reads we have for each of these um, guides in the library file we supply. So this tutorial, this data set, we're using the Brunello library, which is a human genome-wide um, knockout library. So I'm going to upload the Brunello library file. So I'll use paste fetch here. Okay, and that should appear in the history. That's waiting to upload. In the meantime, I will search for magic count. So this is it. So and what we're going to input here is we are going to input again our collection of our trimmed reads. So that's the output of cut adapt. And we will also then select our library file. We need to wait for it to finish uploading.
and this is the Brunello file. This has just over 77,000 guides in this library. So there's four guides for every targeting every human gene. And then there's about a thousand non-targeting controls. And this is what the file looks like. So the first column is an is the ID identifier for each of the guide RNAs. The second column contains the sequence of each of the guides. And the third column has what gene it's targeting. So as you can see, the first four rows are four guides that are targeting the A1BG gene. Okay, and we've got 77,000 of them. Okay, so I can now select Brunello as, after, as it's uploaded. And in the output options, I'm gonna select output the summary statistics and also the plots. Okay, and execute that. Okay, so, and that's gonna output three files. So counts for every guide, the summary statistics, and then the plots. However, this is using 1% of the original data. So these aren't as maybe useful for you to see as what a compared to what a real data set looks like. So we're gonna, at this point now, import these three files for the full samples. So that's these links here. So you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to copy those links, go upload data, paste in the links here, start that. Okay, so these three files are the same as these three, except in this case, this is 1% of the data and this is the full files, full pass Q files. Okay. And the tutorial website goes through the different columns that are in each of these output files and what they are for. So I'll just point out some of the key things. Okay, great. Okay, so first we'll have a look at the count summary file. So that's that one here. I'll click on the eyeball to view it. Okay, great. So we've got our file name, the label of our sample, and this tells us how many reads we had in the files we inputted. So in this case, it's over eight, near 20 million, and then how many of them mapped and what percentage mapped. So we are looking for at least 60%, but we get 80%, so that's very good. It also tells us how many guides we have and how many have zero counts how many of no no reads mapping to them at all so we hope that to be no more than one percent so that's okay for this data set and then we also get this genie index which is important uh, metric to have a look at so this is a measure of um how even the distribution of guides are so if we um we're doing a, a positive selection screen and uh, it would be okay to have high values here because we just expect only a few uh, few cells few guides to be um, present we're doing a negative selection screen so we want to see small genie index values here and that's what we see so that's good okay there's a bit more on the genie index explained here Okay, so these metrics for these samples are pretty good. And we can also have a look at the plots that Magic Count produces here. So if we click on the eyeball. Okay, we get um, some box plots. That shows us that the distribution is pretty, pretty similar for our samples. A little bit more variability at the day eight time points compared to the time zero. Um, distribution is pretty similar um again in this uh, histogram type plot the control is a bit lower because there's more more points plotted um, and we also get a pca plot this would be useful if we had um 
if we had replicates here so we could see if our replicates are grouping together and if we have a good separation between our different samples our different groups we also get um, a little heat map showing um, the hierarchy of clustering of our samples and this helps us to see that our in this data set our again our day eight time points are a bit more similar than our time zero baseline sample. Okay. Okay, so now that we've generated our counts, so just have a look, this is actual counts file we're gonna go on and use. So where we've got a row for every um, guide, the same what gene and it's targeting, and then also how many counts that guide has for each of our, in this case, three samples. So now we're going to input that into magic test to be able to compare our uh, conditions of interest. So look at magic test. Okay, so here. So for magic test, what we want to do is input the guide counts. And we will specify that our treated sample is in our first column. So it's actually called if it's in the first column, that's column zero. And we want to compare that to our control. So to our vehicle sample. So drug to vehicle it's in column one then. And we want to output what do we want to output we want to output a normalized counts file because that's useful if you want to plot the um the normalized count values for uh, different genes different guides for those genes and we'll also choose to output the plot okay so we'll execute that just to say that there is well, Magic Test is using an algorithm called Robust Ranking Aggregation, so the RRA. And then this is um, just a little visual of what it's doing. And in essence, it's helping us to identify essential, essential genes by identifying guides um, that are highly ranked, either highly enriched or highly depleted in our treatment versus our control. Okay. And just a note on if you have biological or technical replicates, you can input them into magic. You can separate the, the names by a comma. There are biological replicates for the samples for the experiments used here, but we just, for the sake of time um, in the tutorial, we're using just the single samples. Okay, and what we're going to see is that magic test outputs a gene summary file and a guide summary file. Then we chose to output also the normalized counts file and we get a PDF report with some plots. Okay, and again, the dip columns in the different files are explained here in the website. And we'll have a look at the gene summary file. Okay, so. Here we get um, a row for each gene, so it's 20,000. For this human genome knockout uh, library. So we'll have, look, we'll have a look here. Okay, so in this, as you can see every row is a gene and we get the number of guys that are targeting that gene as well as metrics. So RRA score, p-value, FDR, and ranking of that gene, both for ne negative selection and for positive selection. So this is a negative selection screen. We're looking for genes um, that are where the guides have decreased um, with the treatment compared to control because we're interested in um, drug sensitivity. Okay, and we also get a, let's see, sgRNA summary file. Just 
So I'll use the peep to have a view here. In this case, we have a row for every guide. So we've got over 77,000. And this gives us the counts for the guide in the treated and the control condition. So if we want to have a, a, a look at the individual guides and how they're performing. Okay, and then the PDF report we get output. This gives us uh, plots of the top 10 negatively and positively selected genes. So these are ranked by the by Magic's RRA score or p-value. And you can think of the RRA score as similar to p-value in that it's showing us the um, most significantly ranked genes. Okay, so here we get our top 10 genes. Uh, similar results, whether we look at the RRA score or the p-value. And then we get plots for these top 10 genes or their guides. So every gene has about four guides. And so we see how the abundance of those guides is changing in the uh, control compared to the treatment. So that's our drug and our vehicle. So as I said, we're interested in guides that are dropping out, that are increasing the cell sensitivity to the drug for this particular experiment. So we would hope to see that these four guides for vehicle are all um, uh, higher than what they are in the um, drug. So if we look though, we can see that this may not be the case for every gene in our, in our um, top 10 example. So if we look at this FL1 gene, this is the fourth top negatively selected gene. But if we look at the actual guides, we can see that one guide is um, decreased, is very decreased in drug compared to vehicle control. But one of the other guides is slightly increased and two of the others aren't changing that much. So by looking at these counts for this, for the individual guides, we can see maybe we wouldn't have as much um, confidence in that gene being um, one of our uh, key genes, essential genes here, compared to some of the others. So it's worth having a look at the individual guide values. Okay. Okay, and something that's quite commonly done is to create volcano plots for the results. So we can do that with the volcano plot tool in Galaxy. And we first need to prepare or reformat the gene summary file so we can create the volcano plot. Because as we saw in the gene summary file, we've got p-values for both negative and for positive and log full change values as well. So we really just want four columns like this for the volcano plot, gene, one p-value, one FD, one adjusted p-value and a log full change column. So we can use, so, so what we're gonna do is, basically it's described here. So we are going to select, if the negative selected p-value is smaller than the positively selected p-value, that means the gene is negative selected. So we use that p-value. And if the negative selected p-value is larger than the positive p-value, the gene is actually positively selected. So we are going to use awk to select, to create uh, these p-value and log full change columns. So I'm gonna copy that and go to the awk tool. Okay, so it's the gene summary file we want to reformat. Okay, and that's going to convert our gene summary file into this. Okay. 
then we can use, so if we have a look here, you can see we've just got our four columns now. And we just need to specify what our false discovery rate column is, our p-value, our log for all change, and our gene labels. And then we can ask it to label our, for example, our top 10 most significant genes and execute that. Okay, if we have a look at the results. Okay, we get a volcano plot produced where we can see significance on the y-axis and log full change on the x. So we've got our uh, positively selected genes to the right of the, the zero and our negatively selected genes to the left. So in this case, these are our negative selected genes of interest. Okay. And if we want to identify pathways, um, essential pathways between our conditions, between our drug treatment and vehicle control. There's many different tools we could use, but we use one called FGSEA, which stands for Fast Gene Set Enrichment Analysis. And what we need for that, though, is a follow of pathways. So there are for human, there are hallmark pathways available from the Broad MSIGDB um, website. So there's one of these, the hallmark file we have here. So we'll import that. We'll use paste fetch. Okay. And actually, I should have set the type to tabular, but if you do what I did, you can actually change the data type then and set it to tabular here through the pencil. And um, because it needs to be tabular format for the FGSEA tool. So it should be tabular. I need to wait for the tool to stop running to upload. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now we are going to actually, just before we use FGSEA, we need to prepare our gene um, summary files. So we need just the gene symbols and the negative score. So from the gene summary file, so from here, because we're most interested in the negatively selected genes for this experiment, we're just gonna chop out this, the gene and that negative score column. So I'm gonna use the cut columns of a table tool and use that to select first and third columns from our gene summary file. Okay, if we have a look, you can see we've just got those two columns there. And now if we look for our FGSEA tool, Okay, we are going to input this, um, our genes, their uh, scores to rank by. We are then going to input our pathways, or our fall with our gene sets. And just to show you what that looks like here. So every row is a pathway. 
the name of the pathway. It's a link to more information on the pathway from the MSIGDB website. And then also the genes that are members of that pathway are in the subsequent columns. Okay. We'll say we're interested in genes set of size 15 and above. Yeah, so they're not too small. And we will output plots. Okay. Okay, we get two outputs here. So then we get a, a ranked list of pathways and also a PDF file containing some plots. Okay, and if we look at the ranked category list, we can see we've got pathways with their p-values, adjusted p-values, and we can see top pathway is oxidative phosphorylation. And we also get some plots then that show us so um, how these genes in the gene sets uh, where they are in our ranked list of of um, genes so our genes being ranked from left to right and shows us how these gene sets for example from the oxidative phosphorylation are um, ranked in our data okay and there's another tutorial in Galaxy called Genes to Pathways that gives a bit more information on this FGSEA tool. Okay, and then if you have, if you want, if you have multiple conditions, so there's another mo module for Magic called Magic MLE, which you can choose to run. So the one we've been using, Magic Test, only allows you to compare two conditions. So for example, what we were doing our drug versus our vehicle at time point eight. But if you had more than that, more complex designs, you could use this magic Emily algorithm. And um, it is slower to run, so it takes about 30 minutes or so on this uh, data set. So we won't run it here. You can uh, run that yourself if you like. And just to note that instead of outputting um, scores for both positive and negative selection, it outputs a single value, a beta score. And a negative beta score indicates negative selection and a positive score indicates positive selection. Okay, and for that, for the MLE, you create a sign matrix, as um, one example there, and more information on the MAGIC website. Okay. And again, you can visualize your results from the Emily using volcano pots. Okay, so hopefully this tutorial has helped you um, see how you can analyze CRISPR screen data. So using standard sequencing tools such as FastQC, MultiQC, adapter trimming tools like CutAdapt, and then how you can use the magic toolkit to count um, Count your guides and to test for differences in guide abundance um, across uh, different conditions. And then also how you can create some downstream um, visualizations such as volcano plots and perform some pathway analysis with tools like FGSEA. Okay. And there's some links here if you want to get help with this. And uh, if you have any feedback, we'd, there's a little form here. We'd love it if you would um, complete that. And thank you very much for listening and taking part in this tutorial today. <laughs>